so you guys asked, and I'm here to deliver. Let's continue our search for the most difficult to learn fighting game characters, covering as many different titles as possible so everyone can find something to relate to. Last time we talked about Ivy from Soul Calibur, Venom from Guilty Gear, Crimson Viper from Street Fighter, Lei Wulong from Tekken, and Akira Yuki from Virtua Fighter. If you missed that video you can check the description for the link, but there's no need to watch it first, since this isn't a top 10 list or anything like that. I think it wouldn't be fair to rank these characters like this, since they come from games with different levels of complexity. Therefore, if you're late to the party, feel free to enjoy this video first and then, later, look for the first one. So, without further ado, and considering we were so heavy in 3D fighters last time, let's start with something that uses the good old 2D graphics, albeit with a modern spin to it. Carl Clover, Blast Blue, Central Fiction. The son of Relios Clover, Carl is a traveling vigilante that searches for his father in order to stop whatever plans he may hold. He is joined by his sister, Ada, whose soul is trapped in the Nox Nictoris Nirvana. He is possibly the most difficult character to use, as his offense, defense, health points and range are among the lowest in the game. This is balanced out by the fact that the player can control both Carl and Nirvana at the same time, and with careful zoning, trap the enemy between them to launch clever combos and distortion drives, whittling down the opponent's health to zero. If mastered, Carl has an amazing combo damage, insane pressure, ridiculous mix-ups and crazy resets. In order to achieve that, it is vital that both Carl and Nirvana are in position, because none of them can accomplish much alone. It's the synergy between the two that sets Carl's offensive game apart from the rest of the cast. One of the keys in using Carl is to create combo chains with Nirvana, either by trapping the opponents in between the two and stringing combos together, or a barrage of attacks into the corners. To get opponents into this situation, the best moves to use are air dashes back and forth to essentially force the enemies into a desirable position. Also, using Nirvana's upper attack can negate blocks and is often the best way to trap opponents into a loop. It's hard enough keeping track of one character in such a fast game like Blast Blue, let alone two at the same time, but those that take on this challenge and can master the controls of both Carl and his puppet can become a very tricky adversary that most would be wise to avoid. Unhell, the King of Fighters 14, introduced in KOF 2001. Unhell is a light-hearted, flirtatious and playful individual, in spite of her working status as an assassin for Nasks prior to the organization's disbandment. Her return to the series in KOF 14 was celebrated by many, but newcomers should be aware of what they're getting into if they hope to win their battles with this sexy girl. Unhell is a very technical character that has a very unique moveset compared to other characters in the game. Her main feature are the unchained moves, which can be really confusing and hard to use for some players, myself included. They're divided into three parts, starters, chainable moves and enders, each with a few different options to choose from depending on the situation. Killer Instinct players might have an idea of how it works due to some familiarities with the combo system in KI, but although it has some resemblance, it's not quite the same thing. After learning all these attacks, it's time to put them together, and it's not as simple as memorizing a few different combinations. Unhealth players should adapt to the situation and make use of other techniques, like command dashing to break the chains, allowing for greater pressure. It's a complicated system, but allows for a lot of creativity and customization. So she's the ideal character for those that despise flowcharts and would like the opportunity to make their combos as they go. You know, provided you master all the rules behind it. Jill Valentine, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. One of the first two characters introduced in the cult classic Resident Evil, Jill is a police officer in Raccoon City that survived the nightmare of the T-Virus and earned the respect as an elite biohunter. Though she's had many different looks throughout her career, in this game she takes on the role of the captured Jill from Resident Evil 5, who is controlled by Albert Wesker. She's able to access abilities that allow her to move so fast that she seemingly teleports to her opponents to take them down with close quarters combat. In a radical change from her Marvel vs Capcom 2 playstyle, Jill is now a nimble, rushdown character with little keep away capability. Exploiting the full potential of her new moveset primarily requires players to master her Feral Crouch move, a technique that puts her in an enhanced state. During Feral Crouch, Jill is kept in a low stance and incorporates high-speed dashes and ruthless combo-based offense. 
but the move is considered difficult to control and leaves her defenseless. Her level 3 hyper combo, Mad Beast, places her in a much longer period of Feral Crouch, heightening the risks and benefits to a much greater degree. Though dangerous, Feral Crouch is absolutely necessary for Jill's game plan, as it allows her to quickly recover from a lot of attacks and gives her the ability to instantly cover the distance to the opponent. Learning how to go in and out of Feral Crouch is a vital technique to Jill players, so much so that you can't even have the luxury to wait for her to naturally assume the position. Although some attacks do end up with Jill crouching in her Feral stance, it's faster and more effective if that change is done manually by the player. So even when the character wants to give you a momentary break, a wise Jill player knows that you shouldn't take it. It's not by accident that she's an extremely rare character to see in tournaments, since few people actually dare to take the time to learn her skills, when there's other very powerful characters with an infinitely easier game plan available. For most players, the rewards are just not worth the risks. Should you decide to be one of the few Jill players though, rest assured that once mastered, you'll be able to run over many adversaries before they can even tell where you came from. Sonya Blade, Mortal Kombat X A veteran in the series, Sonya was in the roster of the original Mortal Kombat game and, with a few exceptions, she has been part of the cast in almost all of its sequels. This is true again in the latest title in the series, Mortal Kombat X, where she's sometimes considered to be one of the best characters in the game. And it seems fitting to mention a Mortal Kombat character in this list, since MKX pretty much makes everyone a little bit harder to master by having the player decide between three different variations, each with its own unique moves and tactics. While some characters work in a similar fashion in all of them, others, like Sonya, play very differently depending on which variation you decide to go with. Sonya's three choices are Special Forces, which gives her a drone that can be used to extend combos and offers great overhead low mix-ups, Cover Ops, that brings back her trademark military stance from Mortal Kombat 9 and also has overhead low mix-ups. And the Demolition variation, which gives Sonya two different grenades she can use to make almost any attack safe from punishment in most situations. She has a little bit of a learning curve, but also some very interesting setups once you understand how the character plays. Though all of her variations are viable in some way, Demolition is thought to be the most effective one, but newcomers might find it difficult to find opportunities to replenish her ever so precious grenades, since pretty much every character has a way to quickly punish her from a distance, sometimes with deadly results. This wouldn't be so bad if they weren't essential, but Sonya's grenades are a huge part of her arsenal in Demolition, creating an insane guessing game to the adversary anytime you drop a grenade after a block string. They increase your damage output and create powerful 50-50 scenarios, but the tricky part is not to panic when you're in a real match with zero grenades at your disposal, which strongly handicaps your game. Add that to other issues that MKX players have to deal with, like run cells and complicated negative edge combos, and you get yourself a powerful and dominated character, but one that requires a certain level of finesse to be used with success during the whole match. Fox McCloud, Super Smash Bros. Melee Fox McCloud is an anthropomorphic red fox and the main protagonist of the Star Fox series, who sometimes literally goes by the name Star Fox, especially by his many enemies, and maybe a few less informed gamers. He's been part of the Smash Bros series from the beginning, ever since the Nintendo 64 days, and usually hovers around the top of the cast. Most often than not, Fox is thought to be at least among mid to high tier, and in some occasions, like in Melee, even the best character in the game, which grants him quite a lot of tournament presence. As a fighter, he is second to none in the hands of very experienced, fast-paced players. His lightning quick moves, fast, effective finishers and an unparalleled ability to spam his projectile weapon combine to form a fighter who is more than capable of dealing with anything thrown his way. However, while Fox is commonly classified as the best character in the game, he is definitely far from the easiest to pick up and play. He is especially heavy in terms of technical feats, and this, in many cases, causes newer players to shirk the burden of learning Fox in favor of characters that are more user-friendly and accessible at lower levels, such as Sheik. A common approach and shield pressure option, for example, requires a ton of inputs, which means a lot of time spent practicing at home. While competitive gamers find him able to control any fight against any character using his incredible speed and versatility, newcomers must be careful, 
slow, moving or unwary players might find themselves caught off guard by the jerky, erratic nature of his moves and fall prey to the natural tendency to continuously illusion themselves right off the stage or fall off the edge in a tornado kick. Fox is not the easiest option in the roster, but once you have begun to explore him as a competitive character and discovered the will to invest the necessary time and effort demanded by his technical playstyle, he can be highly rewarding. And that's all we have for today, folks. Five more technical characters from five other fighting game series. It took me a hell of a lot of research to write some of these, like Fox, who comes from a game I literally had almost no knowledge before taking this journey, but I hope the result was entertaining to you guys, regardless of your game of choice. Thanks a lot to everybody that gave me feedback on the previous video. You might have noticed I took inspiration from what some of you said to look into different titles this time, so luckily, by now, everyone can relate to at least a few of these cases. As usual, if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more stuff like this in the channel, please leave your comment below with your opinion and, if possible, share this with a friend, in your Facebook group or whatever it is that you talk to other fighting game players. You should also consider following me on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash chemiplayer for more updates. Not only I post my videos there, but also other random video game related things like news, music, artwork or content from other people that I strongly recommend watching. So leave a like if you want and I'll see you guys later.